Hello everybody. I hope all of y'all are having a good day today. It's uh, Thursday here in the Philippines and uh, we've got one more day uh, to prepare. Uh, so we'll have everything ready for our Saturday morning feeding. Uh, we have 200 plus children now that we feed. And uh, Sunday is going to be our very first family future love church on the mountain family bonding day and uh so we're man <laughs> we got a lot of stuff to do and uh, we're very excited about it so and we've got a new sign for our church and everything's going to be very cool i'm excited and lynn is she can't even sleep at night planning things and thinking of things to do and uh it's going to be an honor to uh be the first one to share um the first message um for family bonding day and I, I get to do that and Lynn will be my interpreter so it's gonna be really nice it's awesome um, <clears throat> I did a uh, the video I'm gonna do uh, about today is about the Lord's Supper yeah <laughs> the communion Holy Communion the Holy Eucharist what the Catholic Church calls it I'm gonna I'm gonna do a, a video on that today uh, I did a video on this probably eight years ago or so and uh, it was back before I knew Lynn, back before I lived here in the Philippines. And uh, when I did it, back in those days, I, I had a pretty big YouTube channel. That, that channel got hacked and took over, so I can't use it anymore. But, but I had a few thousand subscribers, and I uh, used to get a lot of views. And there was some pretty popular folks, YouTube um, personalities, uh, Christian YouTube personalities that watched uh, my videos and uh, there was a couple that, that after I did this video man they went right back and they made a video you know contradicting it and and um, uh, this one lady uh, she got on there and, and she said not only does the Lord told me in his spirit that that he wants us to take the Holy Lord's Supper, but he wants us to speak in tongues when we do it. And man, she was and she was walking around and looked like a chicken dancing and her dogs in the background howling and everything. And I was like, man, what's this world come to? Another guy, big personality, he was like, he, he made a big deal. He had his trays and his, his shot glasses and everything. And he was just, Oh man, it was uh, it was quite the sight to see, and, and all <clears throat> as a knee-jerk reaction to the video I did about the Lord's Supper, and so I, that's what I want to talk about now because it, I've always talked about how ritual and routine, religious ritual and routine, God's always said that's an abomination to me. You know, your rituals, your routines, and all that stuff. That doesn't mean anything to God. But people will take Bible verses out of context where, where Jesus says, whenever you do this, do this in remembrance of me. And they don't understand the history and the culture of the Israelites and of the Greeks, the Romans, and all that. Back in those days, <clears throat> before they ate, they always had loaves of bread on their table and they had wine. And they would sit there and break bread. They would break bread with each other and everybody just get full up on bread and wine and stuff before the main meal came out. Most people were poor and couldn't afford a lot. So the bread, you get kind of full on that and then you bring in the little stuff and, and, and that was the rest of your meal. But they did that before every meal. It's just breaking bread and stuff. That was part of their life. Just like if you lived in Mexico. You know, or, or if you're in Texas and you go to a Mexican food restaurant, there's always chips and salsa there, and you sit there and eat chips and salsa. That's just part of it. Sometimes when I go to some of these churches, I'm kind of hungry. I'm sitting there thinking, man, why couldn't Jesus have been in Mexico City instead of Jerusalem? It'd be nice to bring out some chips and salsa out here. That'd be pretty good, you know. Have us a nice cold Dr. Pepper to chase it down just in case it was a little spicy. But <clears throat> it'd be pretty good. So what, what I'm saying, though, is, is about how that was part of their, their life, their, their, their routine. It's what they did. It was never meant for us, you know, how these churches have all these fancy, beautiful gold and silver colored communion trays for your little shot glasses so you can put your Welch's grape juice in there and your little holders for your unsalted saltine crackers and, 
and and there'd be somebody up there like the Catholic priest, you know, oh, shalom, you know, <laughs> doing in the Latin or whatever it is that they do, and everybody going through this big thing, this big ritual, and everybody getting some crackers and getting some some juice, you know. I, I told people before, so you think it really you, you eating a crumb, a cracker, and taking a shot glass of Welch's grape juice is making God happy. And they said, yeah, yeah, because we're supposed to do it and remember it's a hymn until his glorious return. See, whenever God has returned to you, sorry y'all, my daughter came out here with me to see what I was doing. She did her nails today. Anyway, whenever, <clears throat> and for his glorious coming, and if you look at that word in the Greek, the glorious coming, the coming, it, it, it means he, he comes from one from one level to another, okay? You, Christ, the consciousness of Christ, whenever you become born again, whenever the sleeper, who is Christ, God, within you, awakens. What happens whenever you wake up? The first thing you do when you wake up, you open your eyes. The first thing that happens whenever Christ awakens in you is his eye opens, this eye, okay? This is the fountain of living waters. But the same spirit that is within me and whoever else is born again and people who are yet to be born again, they're all connected to the same spirit. So it's not like Christ is actually asleep in you. It's just that he is dormant in you until you are called out. And whenever you're called out, you hear his voice, <clears throat> then he will come from that higher state of consciousness that is within you because the kingdom of God is within you. So he moves from one state to another within you. But that sleeper awakens in you. It's like Jesus when he was in the boat and there was a storm. He was in the bottom of the boat and they came and they woke the sleeper and whenever he woke, he calmed the storm and that's what Christ does in us. So if you say, I have to do this because the Bible says I have to do it, because I'm doing it out of joy, because I'm waiting on His glorious coming, then what you're saying is that Christ is not alive in you. It is no longer you who live, but Christ who lives. You're saying that you're not born again yet, because the kingdom of God is within you. And if you're born again, He is awakened in you, and He is here, He has came to you. And that's when you start getting the real communion Remember, he's the bread of life. He's the new wine. He'll commune with you and drink that new wine with you. Because he has returned, he will feast with you. If you're, if, you know, it says do it in remembrance of me. Well, who, who of these people around here today was alive then when that happened? Okay, so what we need is people that have experienced God, sharing God with people, and laying them at the feet of Jesus so they can get that manna, that bread, and that new wine today. Instead of going through rituals and routines and believing that that makes us happy when actually that's an abomination to God. Anyway, I just want to share that with you guys. I love you all. God bless. I, I've spoken about this before, uh, but the word revelation, you know, the book of revelations, that word in Greek that is the original word that they used is apocalypso. And it means to uncover, to unveil, lift the veil, something that's hidden. So whenever Christ is revealed to you, see, most people think that word apocalypse is like the end of the world. Well, when Christ is revealed to you, it really is the end of your known world. Because everything you thought you knew, you will throw out. Everything about you that is not love will be burned up. It is the end of your world. God will consume you and you will become new. It'll be no longer you who live, but Christ who lives in you. So whenever that veil is removed, you know, it's like it's all about a wedding. So when it, what happens whenever at the end of the ceremony, the bride turns to the groom and the groom lifts the veil and he kisses the bride. When that happens, the two become one. That's whenever you become one with God in spirit again.
you are returned to your former estate. That's what happens. And whenever that happens, he will sup with you. You will hear his voice. He will call you. He'll call his bride. And he'll reveal himself to you. And your whole world is going to get turned upside down for a good thing. I love you all. God bless.